Okay, and we're back. And when we left off, we had just arrived at the Prothean Archives. And we're about to meet the game's main antagonist. Hello, elusive man. And for those of you wondering, indeed, that is Martin Sheen elusive man. as the elusive man. Fascinating race, the Protheans. They left all this for he is such a good, good character. And he's a fantastic villain. Although in the last game, he was actually your boss you up want? until the end. Love those freaky, creepy what eyes. Basically, I don't know if you can hear the audio over me or if it's just too low, but. I've seen your solution. Your people are turned into monsters. Yep, that's true. They're being improved. And see, he always rationalizes his actions. That's what separates us, Shepard. Where you see a means to destroy, I see a way to control, to dominate and harness the Reaper's power. See, that right there just Imagine sounds how insane. Humanity would be if we control them. Earth is under siege and you're hatching a scheme to control the Reapers? Yes, that You've sounds exactly like what he would do. Hasty. Your destruction of the Collector base proves that. That place that was a freak was an show, an abomination. I'm glad it burned. This isn't your fight any longer, Shepard. Really? You, you try to stop us, me. Even with the Prothean data. I have allies everywhere. Yeah, that's one of the things I love about this game is how many different groups you can recruit if you're careful. Destroying the Reapers is a wasted opportunity. I'd say it's preserving human life, you psycho. Use their power, harness their very essence to bring humanity to the apex of evolution. You've gone too far. Yep, he's don't lost it. He's deluded. If we don't stop and I'm hoping that I don't expect you to anyone who Shepherd. can see how this Shepherd is going is going to probably expect that he's eventually going to take a round in the face eventually. You or take a round somewhere, I hope. Purpose. And despite our differences... You were relatively successful. But like the rest of the relics in this place... Don't you call me a relic. Is over. Enough talk. Liara? Yeah. Like I said earlier, love man. Jennifer Hale. I won't warn you again. Duly, Duly noted. noted. Shepard. What? The data, it's not here. It's being erased. I love how he just casually sits down and goes back to his work. Damn it. How's he doing it? It's local. Someone's uploading the information. For those of you who aren't familiar, by the way, um... Hey! Step away from the console. The Elusive Man's now. character in the second game was actually one of the biggest surprises. Because he wound up being the guy who essentially is responsible for you living at all. Gives you a new ship, gives you all the equipment and weapons and funding you want. And is backing you like the entire way. And spoiler alert for those who never played the second game, though if I can't imagine why you wouldn't have by this point. But he and Shepard actually get along more or less until like the very end of the game. And then you have a core decision that you make that sort of drives the wedge between you. And this game set up so that no matter what choice you made, that wedge is driven between you regardless. Oops. <laughs> and you'll notice me going a little crazy here because I kept trying to use the A button to open the door. And like I said earlier, it's mapped to so many controls that as a side effect, it uh, negates your ability to activate switches sometimes because you'll accidentally hit other keys and stuff. Now here's me trying to blast this traitor psycho whatever she is who uh, is stealing all the data we came for and I'm trying to run her down and she's trying to run away and I actually spent a couple of playthroughs later I actually spent quite a bit of time trying to gun her down, and you can't do it. At least, not that I've been able to. 
powers, weapons, whatever, it's not enough. And I think it's set up so that you have to chase her. I love how she fires at me. It's like, I've got full shields. What are you going to do? Trying to get away from me, are you? And I love this. Here comes Mr. Vega to the rescue. Give the guy credit. It's not subtle, but it works. Yes, he just crashed a shuttle. Yes, he just used a ramming technique. Yes, it just made a fiery mess. But the shuttle's down. <laughs> Thank you for that update. We need the data. And the eye is all, all mangled and Ashley's hauling her away. It's the Terminatrix. The first thing I thought of when I saw this was, is, was the Terminator 3 female Terminator. Which is exactly what it reminds me of at first. Let her go. Let her go. Orders? And I can't believe this idiot thought this was going to end well. Because, like, she knows that anyone who ever crossed Shepard or hurt their friends paid for it severely. Bullet to the chest, repeatedly! Did you expect it to end any other way? Grab that thing! Bring it with us. Shepard, that, grab that thing, bring it with us. Orbit. I do like the... I do like the voice work that Jennifer Hill puts into it. She probably does a... better job of sounding like the commanding female leader than anyone I've ever heard. And I mean, it's easy to find a male voice actor who can really do that well. I often... In games, I find that's very hard for them to do it with a female convincingly, and Jennifer Hale does it beautifully. Now, we're taking off before the Reapers rip the plant into pieces. Yes, I have an achievement. Again! Reminds me of the red versus blue thing. Go look up uh, red versus blue achievables for a hell of a joke. All right. As soon as this loading screen goes away, I do apologize for the loading screen. Sometimes, even after installing it, the loading screens are sometimes obnoxious. Now, this is something that I think is never brought up, but is implied. These people are full-grown adults wearing body armor and weaponry. Ashley and Shepard just carries Ashley over her shoulder like she we weighs nothing. And I think it's implied no. that the suit amplifies the their Citadel strength severely. We can find help there. Get us to the Citadel, Joker. Wow. Hold on, Joker. I was always one of my favorites. I See was a little disappointed that he didn't get more voice work in this game. Because I always thought he should. Patch me through. I'll forward it to the call room. Now, these are something you'll run into quite a bit in this game if you haven't played it. You'll have these conversations with Hackett after every major event. I was there. So was the elusive man. I was worried Cerberus might try something. Did you get the data? Yes. Most of it. He downloaded some before I could stop it. Edie and Liara are analyzing what we recovered. What have you learned? Was it worth the effort? Preliminary evidence suggests the data is a blueprint for a Prothean device. Device? Yes, device. Device, you know? Massive in size and scope that's capable of unquantifiable levels now, of destruction. When fully assembled, 
The thing looks like a gigantic German stick grenade or a gigantic egg beater. I'm not sure which, but it looks like all kinds of weird. Lieutenant Commander Williams it is cool looking, I'll give it that, but it's like not precisely the most intimidating. But we both know this is just the beginning. Talk to the council, show them what you found. With luck, they'll give you all the support we need. <sighs> you know, I, I can't help but feel that that's like Hackick being a massive optimist. Because, I mean, seriously, after all the crap the council gives you in the last two games, to expect them to be any form of help here sounded insane to me. Shepard? Edie is extracting data from the Cerberus machine. We'll have details to present to the Council by the time we reach the Citadel. And Lieutenant Commander Williams? I've done what I can for her. She needs proper medical attention soon. I thought it was weird that yeah, the right. Normandy left port, even in an emergency, Unless we stop without a doctor. Papers, yeah. And it strikes me as odd that Shepard is this weapon could be the answer if we can build it. Perpetually looks we exhausted to me. It, you didn't see what they did to Earth. How is one weapon supposed to stop them? What are our options? You know we can't win this conventionally. Yeah. Shame we can't get all the fleets and just shoot them to death. Shepard. You know, our usual tactic. Isn't it worth trying at least? Yeah. I'm gonna check on Ashley and James. Make sure we're ready to present our findings to the council. Shepard seems I'm like sure such a will see the need to help. pragmatist and a downer in this one. I think the the voice acting combined with the story and writing was meant to give her the impression that she's so weary of this whole debacle that she just wants it over. And so she's willing to do anything to see it succeed, but at the same time, you can just feel like the life training out of her. Now, I've always loved the Citadel. I always thought it was a cool design. Pardon me, folks. Now, that being said, the lore in Mass Effect is so rich that every single species has its own design has its own unique structure and technology. And here we are. We have arrived at the Citadel. Barely got a pulse here. Gosh, I thought that was really impressive how they made it Where look like she's just been beaten to death. Memorial. Best care in the Citadel. Despite the fact We're that all that happened was her head got slammed up against the council. wall. Right. Looks like we have company. Looks like they might be coming to see you. Commander Shepard. Got word you were arriving. <laughs> Bailey. Captain Bailey. Good to see you again. Those who played all the side missions do? got know what I'm no talking about, but he got now. a bit of an upgrade in this game because now he's not only promoted, but he gets a ton more screen Thanks. time. Now half my job is dealing with political bullshit and escorting dignitaries around. No, no offense. offense. None taken. So you're here to bring us to the council? I'm here to tell you the council is expecting you, but they're Yeah, I'm sure they are. I'm sure they're expecting the me to show up just so they can give me more crap. They apologize for the inconvenience Respects. and blah 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 blah. Meet them yeah, here. I don't have a great office. deal of uh, love for the All council. Right. And the funny thing was is I played Paragon mostly in my previous playthrough, so I saved their lives. Thanks. I might destroyed a Reaper form. And despite all office. that, they're One still giving me grief. Away. You? Crazies. I'm just a tourist today. I'll try not to get in any trouble. <laughs> James, Vegas definitely strikes me as like your typical Marine. I'll be right there. I do have some family who's been in the military and some friends who've been in the military. So I do know, you know, a little bit about that, but... James just strikes me as your typical Marine. He's like, if he's not fighting, just leave him alone and let him do his thing. And later on in the game, you'll actually see that he's found a place downstairs in one of the refugee camps playing cards. 
and apparently goes from winning to losing and back again repeatedly. Hello, Commander Shepard. Welcome to the Citadel. This is Docking Bay D-24. Note that due to recent events, official identification and weapons permits may be requested by CSAC personnel for routine verification. What's with the heightened security? Yeah, because in the last game, you could carry the guns around with you constantly. This game, you're actually restricted. They won't let you carry them on the Citadel. I always thought that was strange. Like, what are they expecting me to do? Just go shoot happy? You know, pop around the corner, see someone I don't like? Bam, bam. Yeah, well. Definitely some political commentary about that, though. I'm sure. But no, as far as the Citadel in this game, other important areas I actually about? felt that it was much more limited. It, it felt much smaller. I think part of it is because they the intentionally wanted to keep you from you spending too much time on it. They wanted you to go out and Citadel find Citadel stuff. But well, it felt like, you know, this giant space station you'd been in previously is, was now this empty, you know, you know, part of it was this cavernous place, and then you go down to the refugee camp, it's this overcrowded mess, but you feel like there's thousands upon thousands of kilometers of space, and no one is using it. It's like... Avena, shut up. You can see one of the many magnificent vistas for which the Citadel is renowned. Yeah, it's about silly me spending there? time talking with her. I, I thought it would be like in the last game where level. they have all kinds of hilarious stuff you can make commentary on. And not so much, they're mostly regulated to general info Please in this game. Speak with me again if you require further assistance. And I will admit okay. to being horribly disoriented by the change in the layout of the Citadel. It really messed with me. Now, you'll notice sometimes text pops up while I'm walking around, and that's actually a neat feature of the game. You can walk around the Citadel and encounter random stuff being said, and all of a sudden you'll get a pop-up that says, Hi, you have a mission. Now, here's Diana Allers. Commander, just who I was looking for. And Diana she Allers is voiced by, I believe, Jessica Chobit. And if I'm not mistaken, she's like a G4 personality or something. I'm a military reporter not a, show a lot of people were happy when we're word got around that she was in the game. My don't know why, I personally don't know the history on it. I want that ship to All I knew for sure was that, uh... Why would I want that? You know, some people or did not like it. Or lost in the editing room. And this now, she actually does a good job in the won. game. I've got Alliance security clearance and her and position and her her use is not overdone or too extreme. Can you handle an arrangement like that? Or do I keep looking? And basically what I'm doing is I'm bringing her on the ship now. to do reporting from now. the Normandy. Report to the ship as soon as possible. And you get to do How much gear can I bring? You know, One veto one. on different things aye, aye, that you know she might say. You know, I, I authorize what story she runs, but in reality the most interaction you have with her is she sometimes does interviews with you about recent events. And actually having those interviews can cause, you know, different factions to give you more support or withdraw their support if you handle them wrong. Welcome, and this game really drives home the idea that you know, the individual actions you take can have larger consequences. Although I just know there's people who've already beaten the game who are just expecting me to go on a tirade about, you know, how it ends. And I'll get to that when the ending comes. Because I think my opinion might be a little bit shocking to some people. To now, here's me, ho you know, holding up over at the medical center. And hitting up the Serta Foundation and essentially robbing them blind. Because I had tons of funding from previous gameplays that came through. And I just basically bought out the whole thing for no other reason than to be, you know, me you know, just a mess with it. But 
The only thing I didn't wind up buying was the candy. Thank you for shopping. And that and the flowers. Now, I will say that one thing you'll run into is that as you go through certain areas in the cell, though, you'll hear conversations taking place. And when you hear them, they'll activate side quests you can acquire where you can find or acquire different items in the missions themselves and bring them back to the Citadel and give them to people and they activate war assets. And these are helpful for, you know, building up your forces to fight the final battle and everything, but what I thought was interesting was they go through all this trouble and most of the time they're just things you pick up at random. You know, you're not really looking for anything. You go over and you see a little clicker activate and you click it and it's, oh, war asset. What the heck? Anyway. Anyway, where did I leave Ashley? Oh, um, I believe first things first, I was going to see uh, Dr. Chakwas and Dr. Michelle. Here we are. Here's Shepard now. Dr. Chakwas, you're here? I'm working at an Alliance R&D lab down in Shouter Woods, coordinating closely with Admiral... I Patrick. always liked Chakwas. I heard you escaped Earth in the Normandy. And I especially that was hilarious injured. when you got drunk with her in the second game. We had a run-in with the Cerberus synthetic on But uh, she's always she been like the, the very... She, she didn't have a lot of lines and she well didn't have a lot of... Considered character interaction but having her as part of the crew just felt right so when I, I I'm given the option here to bring her back in the Normandy I jump at it and she agrees with you that's the thing that I always thought was crazy you know she's got this cushy job at a lab and she'd rather be on a warship I always thought that was hilarious don't thank me so soon Joker is still aboard and I'd be surprised if he's been remembering his medication. Yeah, you'd be surprised. I thought that was funny that she, you know, makes a joke about Joker not remembering his medication. And that was one of the things in the drunk session in the last game that she actually made a, a, a speech about was how she needed, you know, to help Joker and be with Shepard for a sense of stability. And I always liked that. Because of you, I don't know where I'd Now be here's Dr. Michelle, and if you don't get Chakwas, she replaces her, which is interesting to me. me I, of course, would never, you know, Commander turn aside Chakwas, but if you let Chakwas die in the second game, injured. Michelle will take her place in this game. These types of injury can go either way. She hasn't regained consciousness yet, but her vitals are strong. But we're so just about wrapping up here, and I think we're gonna close up with uh, Michelle here and then in the next one we'll go visit Ashley and then we'll take off and start doing some galaxy hopping and I'll do some I'll make sure to splice out all the boring boring planet scanning garbage which when I do the second Mass Effect later on I'll have to make sure to do that as well but about ready to wrap up here with Dr. Michelle and hopefully when we come back we'll wrap up and visit Ashley and then go out into the galaxy and blow more crap up alright well great seeing you all again see you for the next video have a good day